Ken Rick in 15 extra minutes to replace Crystal. That's right. <laughs> so remember that for next week. So you praise the Lord. We're not going to start until you get praise and worship team up there. So I've done that before. Had a great time last week. Uh, really blessed. Got to take Dad to Canada. We went fishing. and Fishing was a little slow, but it's still better than down here. The best part was the weather. It was like fall. It was in the 40s and the 50s in the mornings and in the evenings and 70s during the daytime. So, yeah. If they didn't have those great big mosquitoes that can carry you away, uh, I'd live up there. But anyway. What, yeah, it's too far north for Zika. Yeah, so you just got to itch. Yeah, do that. So. But we had a blast. It was, it was lots of fun. I heard you guys had a pretty good week with Pastor Gary last week. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I think said we're about 70 here. That's hurt my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really. Holiday weekend, I understand. Everybody's traveling here and there and at the fair and a poet don't know it. So, stand your feet. Just want to praise the Lord. Almighty God, we bless you today and we honor you in your house. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us. We thank you, Lord, that you are a good and a merciful God. Thank you, God, that you are, uh, you are the God who heals us, who delivers us, who sets us free. Lord, you are the God who forgives us and cleanses us and makes us righteous in your sight. And thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes us. And so, Lord, we've gathered in this place today to be in your presence. We've gathered in this place today to hear your word and to hear your Holy Spirit speak to us. Father, to, to change our hearts. Lord, that we might together lift up a praise and a worship to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Father, as we enter in today, we come in and thank you that, that by the blood of Jesus, when we ask forgiveness and confess our faults, you forgive us. We can come in today with clean hands and a pure heart and raise them up to you and, and to worship you and to praise you. Lord, I pray, Lord, that, that with a pure heart, a joyful heart, a thankful heart, that we can, we can sing to you today. And honor you today and that your presence will fill this place and you'll change yes. us into the image of Christ. And Lord, I just honor you today and thank you, Lord, for these folks who are here. Lord, I pray that every one of them leaves here today knowing you better. Father, knowing that, that you are God who loves them and cares for them, who exists and blesses those who seek him with their whole heart. And so, Lord, we just bless you today and turn this service over to you. We pray for those who aren't with us today and ask that you would bless them and keep them where they are. In Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Lord, you are worthy. I bless you in this house today. You are good and your mercy endures forever. Father, I thank you that we can run to you. Hallelujah. We always have a place of refuge with you, Lord Jesus. Father, you never, you never leave us as orphans. You never leave us alone. But Father, we have, we have safety in your arms. And we bless you today in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. I'll tell you what, I got stuck up on the, the phrase in a, I think it was the second song we, we sang about, like Mary who poured her oil on the Lord. And left his, her sins at his feet. What a, what a beautiful picture of our God. That we can come and worship him. And, and we worship him. And we don't worship him without experiencing his blessing. When we worship him in truth. He always comes and, and, and fills us. He always comes and, and trades our hurt and our pain and trades our tragedy for his joy. He trades our sin for his righteousness. He trades our brokenness for his wholeness and his unity. And it's just a, a good thing. And I'm so thankful that God is a God like that. I want to I want to take some time and, and uh, I know there's a couple of people here who who need uh, who need to be healed. You know, Peggy's one of them, and uh, 
and I just want to pray for physical healing today. So if you if you're here today, you need you need physical healing. I just want you to come up and stand your feet. You got to come up here. And, uh, you got to receive it, right? Yes. You got to believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. So. Come and put your hands on these behind. I would like you to do that, please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father, in the name of Jesus. I just, I know I thank you right now. And I thank you, Father, that she's whole and she's healed. Lord, I, I know that the enemy has come and, and tried to hinder her in her physical body. And Lord, I just pray. I, I just curse arthritis. I curse any bone degeneration in her hip or whatever's causing that pain. And Father, we just thank you that, that you are Jehovah, our, our Jehovah Rapha, our healer. And Father, we just pray and thank you for, for being her healer today. And, and just pray, Father, the pain has to go out of that hip in the name of Jesus. Father, the pain has to leave. Father, that, that she has the right not to be hindered by uh, her physical body as she serves and she ministers to, to the children. And Lord, I, I just bless her right now as my wife and and my sister in Christ, and, and thank you that it's her right to walk whole and heal and healed and without pain. And Father, so by the stripes of Jesus, we claim our healing right now. Yes. We stand on it, we believe yes. for it, and thank you, Father, that freedom is coming. Father, that uh, that any cartilage that might be gone, his Father is be, being restored. And Father, that she's blessed and she's healed today in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you for it. Thank you for it. Father, I, I pray for Linda today. And we just bless her and thank you. Lord, that she's, a, she's our sister in Christ. She's whole and she's healed. Father, we curse that foul spirit of cancer. And Father, thank you that it has to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just pray that every every cell that, that in her body that is not in submission to, to your will and your word has to leave her body. It has to go in the name of Jesus. And Father, we speak to her body and those, and those good cells in her body. And Father, thank you that they're attacking those cancer cells. And, and victory is coming in her body right now. Thank you for the good reports that we've gotten over and over again. But we continue to thank you for complete and total healing and freedom in Linda's life. And we bless her right now. Father, and I thank you, uh, Father, that you build her in, in her knowledge of you. Father, that she continues to read her Bible and to seek you, Lord, that you'll reveal yourself to her and she'll come to know you in a better and, 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 a, and a closer way. And Father, we love her and bless her, and we know that you love her today. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for my brother, and I anoint him with the oil of the Holy Spirit today. Father, I speak to that leg and, and every bone and cartilage. And Father, thank you that everything is healing perfectly and rapidly. And Father, we just we just bless him today. Father, that arthritis, birth sinus, anything that's, that's in his joints, Lord, that's not, that is not, supposed to be there, Lord, has to go in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Father, we just pray that your healing virtue would flow through his body today. Lord, you are, he is blessed today in Jesus' mighty name and whole and healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for my sisters. The Lord, we bless her today in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, thank you that she's whole. Father, I thank you that her back is is loosed right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, that she doesn't have any pain. That she ministers to kids. Lord, that, that, that she is, has the freedom and the movement that she has when she was a young lady. And Father, that, 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 that she is still a young lady. And Father, we just bless her today. Thank you for strength. Your word says this, that, that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and not upon wings as evil. So Lord, I thank you that, that Robert has has released everything to you. Father has given her life to you. And Father, as she serves you, Father, I thank you that joy and freedom and, and strength and, and energy are coming back into her body right now in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, I thank you that, that, that as she's with the kids and ministering to them, Lord, that, 
that their energy and strength form this and she has she matches them every day. And Father, thank you that she is the daughter of God. Whole of you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Father, I pray for Bob Lord. We anoint him with the oil of the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you that it's his right to, uh, to walk upright, to be able to walk and move and, 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 and do what you called him to do. Father, I thank you that he's a minister of the gospel. Father, that as you, you called him to, to, to minister to the, uh, the folks up at the, the nursing home and do those kinds of things. And Father, I thank you that as he serves you, Lord, he finds strength that he didn't know he had. Father, I thank you that he finds freedom that he, that he hasn't felt in years, Lord, for freedom of movement, freedom of, uh, of, of bending over and walking and, and talking. And Lord, I'm just anointing him right now and pray, Lord, that your, your Holy Spirit just enters into your joints, enters into the places where there's stiffness and, 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 and no movement. But Lord, thank you that you are delivering him and setting him free. And Father, we thank you that he's going to minister. And Father, he'd be so caught up in ministering your truth and your love. Father, he won't even think about whatever issues he might have because he'll be gone in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we believe it and we receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I just, I pray for Lisa and I pray for her back. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you, you set her free. Father, I, I thank you, Lord, that, that vertebrae and tendons and cartilages and, and Father, that nerves, Father, are coming in the right place, that muscles are strengthened in Jesus' name. Father, she's got a lot of stuff to do. She's got a calling on her life to serve her family and to serve you. And Father, we just bless our sister right now with strength. We bless her with freedom. We, we just thank you, Father. That you would increase in her life and she would be preached. And Father, I just pray that you just renew her strength. Father, I pray that you renew her joy. Father, I just speak to her. That, that where there may have been unforgiveness and bitterness, Lord, that your, your joy is, is replacing that. So your thankfulness for being a loving God and bringing her this far. Father, you didn't bring her this far but to leave her here, but you're going to bring her out. Father, you're going to deliver her and her family. Father, I thank you for this. If she gets ready for this wedding, Lord Jesus, that you give her strength, that you give her a witness. Father, that the joy of the Lord will be her strength, and Lord, that, that, that she'll, the things that she might be dreading become easy to her. In Jesus' mighty name, bless her and her service to you and to her family. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. God is good, and His mercy and the first forever. Bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, Pastor, get Roger there. He needs a little prayer. Oh, okay. 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 Father, we just anoint Pat right now. And Father, I just speak to his abdomen. And Father, we just call it hope right now. You are the great physician and you are the one. You, your word says, I am the God that he has been. And Father, we stand on that today for Pat. But Lord, Pat, I, I know, Father, that this, this is probably not uh, the, the cause of this is is the, the stress and the discord in his family. And so, Lord, I just pray over him right now. Father, I, I pray, I speak peace over him. Father, I, I speak a sound mind over him in Jesus' name. Father, where the, where the cares of this world have, have troubled him and come in and the enemy tries to rob his sleep, tries to rob his peace, tries to rob his joy and his thanksgiving. Father, I, I, I thank you, Father, that your word tells us that when the enemy comes in like that, the Spirit of the Lord raises up a standard against him. Father, I pray that that word will become strong and patent or when, it, when those things come, when he, when he knows the enemy is, is raising his head, Lord, that he'll He'll raise his eyes to you. And rather than to, to get in fear and and, and discord and, and distress, Father, he will look up upon you and see you, the author and the finisher of his faith. Father, you, we know that he doesn't wrestle with flesh and blood, but he wrestles. We wrestle against spiritual wickedness and imaginations that exalt themselves 
above the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, this is this is not a battle in his family, but a, a battle in, his, uh, in the spiritual realm. So, Father, we, we thank you that, that Pat has authority. Lord, as the Son of God, he has authority to speak your word. He has authority to love when, when other people would, would hate and, and lash out. Father, I pray that you give him peace, that you give him self-control. Father, I pray that, that even in the midst of the storm, Lord, you calm the child. And Father, I thank you that the storm is deciding that this is passing. Father, and I pray that it we pray, Lord, that it passes quickly. Your word says, Lord, that if we ask for wisdom, you'll give us wisdom when we don't doubt. And so, Lord, I, I pray uh, over Pat right now that you give him your wisdom. Not his wisdom, but your wisdom. Father, your, you, you speak to his heart and he'll listen as you tell him what to do and how to navigate through this issue of life. And we bless him today in Jesus' mighty name and anoint him with the Holy Spirit. And Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, just begin to speak to Pat. Begin to put your arms around him. Let him know that, that you are his down payment. You are his his guarantee, Lord, of, out of an inheritance with you. And, and whatever inheritance, the earthly inheritance might be involved, Father, I thank you that uh, that, that that's, doesn't really matter in the scheme of the eternity. But Lord, we pray for restoration in God's family. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hey, Pastor Gordy. Yes, sir. We got one more. Pastor Gordy, how about we got one more? From Marie. Well, I'm gonna pray for you too, though. Right? Okay, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for Marie. Lord, I, I speak to her body. Father, as, as uh, cancer has attacked her. Father, we curse that foul spirit in the name of Jesus. And Father, we speak to her body. We speak to the the white blood cells in her body and and, and say, come up. Come up to normal levels where her body has immunity, where her body begins to fight for itself. Father, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are her healer. You are her strength. And so, Lord, in, in this time where she's isolated from almost everyone, she's not isolated from you. And Father, I thank you that in this time she draws near to you. Father, that, that she, uh, she hears your voice, that she feels your spirit. Father, that her body is strengthened. And Father, pray over her husband, that Kenny, that you would give him peace, that you would give him strength, that you would give him your wisdom to speak your word and to build her faith. And Father, that, that you would you would be seen glorious in this. Father, what the enemy has meant for battle, you will, you, will, you, will, you will win a victory. Father, you've already overcome the enemy in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, that you've overcome death. You've overcome cancer. You've overcome all the things that, that attack your children. And Lord, we bless her today in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for us today. That, and I anoint his heart. I anoint his blood vessels. I anoint, Father, that the that, that Holy Spirit, that you would go through and, and open places where there are floods. Father, open places where there are restrictions. Father, we pray for, for clear flow through his lungs, through his heart. Father, that he would, he would have the strength to serve you, strength to, to, uh, to, to do what you call him to do. Lord, we know that the enemy comes in like this to make us focus on ourselves and not be able to do what, you, what we want to do for you. And so, Lord, I just thank you that you free him of that. That his physical body, Lord, won't be something that hinders him, but Lord, it'll be something that's a vehicle to use for the glory of God. As he submits to you, Father, I thank you that you, you lift him up. And Father, thank you for health and breath and, and healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hey, Pastor Gordy. Yes, sir. I think Rick needs to stay, uh, stay here for his mother, Wanda. Okay. Yeah, while, while he's up there. So. Thank you for Terry. 
And Lord, I just pray over her right now that you uh, you have directed her and led her and Father, that she knows you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, you 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 are the one who said that we are her provider. You are the one who called yourself Jehovah, 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 our provider. You are the one who says that you are El Shaddai, more than an Almighty God. And so, Lord, I, I thank you and we call upon you as, as Jehovah Yira and Terry's life, Father, that you, you have given her a time, Father, that she can recover and have peace. But, Lord, we just speak right now that you open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that she cannot contain. And, Lord, we know that here is your call on our life that we should work and that, and that we should we should serve. And, Father, you have a, a perfect position for her. Lord, where she can serve you, where she can be blessed, and, and where she can make a way, where she can provide for herself, Lord. And, and we know that that only comes from you. Every good and perfect gift comes from you. And so, Lord, we speak the blessings over Terry's life today. And, and Father, I pray that you give her wisdom. And Lord, in her, in her quiet time, I pray that you direct her path, that you tell her where to go, where to apply. Father, that you put someone in her path that will, that it'll just be a, 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 a powerless moment when she meets that person or goes into that place and puts in an application, that they'll be waiting for her, Lord, and they'll receive her and, and bless her. Father, I pray to share that uh, as she goes to, to uh, minister to Tommy today. Father, uh, most of all, we pray for his salvation. And Lord, I pray that you, you give her the right words to say. Father, that your Holy Spirit goes with us. Your word tells us that, that when we get in different situations, Lord, that you'll be there and you'll give us stories. You'll tell us what to say. And so when she's, today when she's brought before Tom, I pray that you would give her a supernatural boldness. Father, that she'll not care about the things in this world, but Lord, she'll speak the, the word of God. She'll speak the truth of, of Almighty God in love and in truth. And Father, that it will pierce his heart. And Father, that she'll be able to, uh, to lead him into a relationship with you. And so Holy Spirit, we pray over Tom to prepare his heart. Father, we speak. We ask for a miracle in his life that you will bring him. Father, from cancer, but most of all, we pray that you deliver him from his sins. That he would be a son of God. Blessed of you. And so, Father, I just thank you, and, and we, we, we believe for a testimony of salvation. And you just know you. Because we don't share his lips with the truth and with joy and with love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, I'm going to Okay. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we anoint one of them. Right now, our sister. Father, your daughter. Lord, I just, she's not here with us today because she's fighting a battle of diabetes. And Lord, that's not right. We know that it's not that way in heaven. Your word says that, that, that your kingdom will come and your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. And so, Lord, we call upon healing. We call upon blood, perfect blood sugar in Wanda's life. Father, we anoint her right now. Father, we just curse diabetes in the name of Jesus. Father, we speak to her pancreas and, 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 and command it to work as it should. Father, that begin to produce uh, insulin in her body. Lord, I thank you that for a stabilization in her body, for a strengthening in her body. Lord, I thank you that she's a, she's a daughter of the Most High God. And Lord, she has the right to walk in health. And we just agree with that today. It's, it's your word and we put our... We, we put our flag down right here and say, Lord, one is healed in Jesus' mighty name. Father, thank you for the stripes that our Savior took, that we might be whole, that we might be healed. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're ministering to her body right now. Father, that she, her body is regulating itself right now because you are her Lord, you are her master, you are her healer. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. All right, Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to this nothing. Father, just command all our uh, calcium and
causes, to all things, all pain, the Father, together, Father, this is, uh, this is it's, 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 it's just, it's just, it's just, it's Caleb's right to be able to move all his fingers the way they're supposed to move, and Father, not to be, uh, not to be injured, Father, we curse arthritis in the name of Jesus, and Father, the, the things that it would like to do in his body. Thank you, Lord, that Caleb's whole and healed. He believes, and he, he believes in you as the whole rock. And Father, I thank you that even right now, Father, that there's a strengthening, there's a strengthening. Father, that flexibility is, is coming back. And Father, I thank you that he's a young man. Father, that, that is called to serve you. We bless him today. Call him whole. Call him healed. And Father, thank you that, that, that all this, uh, is, all this, whatever's there that's not supposed to be there, has got to go. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name. This seems like a small thing, but it doesn't matter when you are the God of the big things and you are the God of the small things. And Father, we just thank you and call upon you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's good. His mercy endures forever. And it's time to give. Yes? Hallelujah. Father, as we come and, and, and give into your kingdom today, we are blessed. We are so blessed of you. And Lord, it doesn't matter if we have a little or we have a lot. It's right for us to give into the kingdom. It's right for us to honor the covenant that we have with you. And Father, we're, we're thankful that when we honor that covenant, you, you pour out those blessings upon us. We know, Lord, that every good and perfect gift is from you. And Lord, as we give, we thank you for being our provider. Lord, we thank you that you are the provider for this church. And Lord, that your will and your word will be spoken from this place. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless every home. And every house in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. speak. Uh, so, uh, and I guess, how many other people in here had a pretty hard week? And just, I, uh, you need to know that uh, in the middle of the storm, God is in control. Amen. Uh, before I left for a show, I'll make this uh, quick. Before I left for a show uh, Wednesday in Auburn, Indiana, we had a big show in Auburn, in Indiana. Uh, the night I had a car in the trailer, uh, $45,000 Corvette and went to pull out the next morning and the Corvette was gone. Uh, so, uh, again, there's sin in this world. Uh, bad things, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, sermon, bad things can happen to good people. Not that I'm good. I'm just saying that God is in control. Amen. So, uh, the police came in crime scene and felt like I was in CSI in Miami and uh, fingerprinting the trailer and everything. So, they did their whole a f uh, hour, hour and a half uh, uh, crime scene gathering of evidence and, uh, and I uh, asked the detective what's the odds of me getting this Corvette back? Uh, he, he didn't speak very highly of that. And he says if you do find us, it's probably already in a chop shop. That's where they cut them up, sell parts or whatever. Or you're going to find a wreck. Fifteen minutes they found my car. Uh, and I went, oh, yeah. And brought the car back, and they let us pick it right up and took it to the, uh, and took it over there, and we sold it. So, you know, that's uh, uh, 
that's uh, and I, I, and what I said right there during that though is I, uh, I said uh, to the detective um, I think you're going to find that just call me when you find it today and he kind of snickered and whatnot he was going to drive around and try to find it but I'm saying the reason you can think positive because uh, in the middle of the storm I say again uh, and that's a psalm, so I'm stealing some words from a psalm that we're going to do here in a couple of weeks. Praise and worship team is in the middle of the storm. Uh, God is in control. And my mother, uh, she had steroid shot in her spine, L3 and L4 nerves, the day I'd left. Um, had that scheduled to help uh, pain in her knee, believe it or not. The new pain clinic in Belpre. And, uh, and that spiked her sugar. Uh, the steroids, whatever type of steroid it is, it spiked her sugar, and, um, and that evening, um, I'm not sure what, uh, 9, 10, 11 o'clock, I mean, it was going to 300, 400, 500, uh, and again, I wasn't around, and uh, this is where uh, church family comes into to play. Uh, Lisa, at 1.30 in the morning, where's Lisa? 1.30 in the morning, I had to take my mom to the hospital, because no one was around. And uh, that's what we do. Uh, you know, uh, Dottie, if, uh, if Angie calls you at 1.30 in the morning and Steve was out of town, what would you do? And she need to go to the emergency room. That's what we do. Uh, Pastor, you, you called me at 1.30 in the morning, got to sell a finger back on. Well, what am I going to do? I'm going to come. That's a joke. But I'm going to come and pick you up. That's what the church family does. So uh, uh, there's two messages there. But again, God is in control. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. Was a guy trying to run it through the auction? Or something? <laughs> Found it in 15 minutes? Well, I, I didn't say the rest of that, but a juvenile had uh, stolen it. And uh, I was going to do a little play on words. It was a juvenile that was delinquent in the Lord is why he stole it. <laughs> so, uh, and, they did, and they processed him and let him go. So that, that's, that's how that works. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm a... What to do, what to do. Lordy, I could share a testimony. Let's hear it. Um, it's been an emotional few days. Yeah. September 1st, three years ago, God had given me a vision to build a, a super restaurant. But um, over the last, well, it lasts for two years. But over that time, um, the people I had in my um, employment, uh, they, again, they weren't, they weren't Christians, they weren't ever anything else, so, uh, and I still believe that was God's vision, but I, I can't, I can't, I cannot control what I had to, had to with, because they steal money, they steal food, they steal your plates, being silverware, whatever else. Um, and so, um, of course we closed it, but, uh, this, 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 last two or three days has been emotional but um uh, and again what's happened here it i was super tired come friday night um so i, I when i fell asleep friday god put me into a fish and into a thing and i didn't even know share fleece yet because even last night it was after nine o'clock when i got home but as i was dreaming as i was a vision i was in an old sandlot baseball field um you know here's that old wood fence there and uh, I'm sitting over here on green grass, beautiful, but on the other side, people I know, people I don't know, and it's dusty, uh, and you can see it's all, it's all dirt and dust, and you can see the dusty air, and there's the old one, one um, board that, hey, that people can crawl in, and, get, and you know, I see people trying to get in, a lot of them can't, and one, one boy gets through, um, and happens to come to me, and it's like, oh yes, and he was all out of cap, he got through, I thought, and then he was gone. Um, but on the other side, Pete, they're starting to push the fence, push the fence. And I, God said to me, be ready because they're going to come through and you're going to be able to help them. One, not just one at a time, they're going to come through and, and, and robes, uh, I mean, Amen. to himself. And yesterday, um, Tubby, a friend of ours, um, you know, he's been trying to get a truck for a long time, been to Riker. Uh, they ran it through eight. I mean, here's, here's a boy who had $8,000 down, 
makes $5,000 a month on a union job, and Riker couldn't get him approved through any banks. Um, he even took his brother, who makes $4,000 a week in the union with him, and they no but banks would even qualify them there, and I said, Tubby, come see me, come see me. So yesterday, I know this was the Tubby that came through the fence, um, when he came, you know, because I, I, I mean, Tubby, I mean, I know Tubby, and again, I just didn't picture him in mind until he walked on the lot yesterday, I said, and then I looked for a minute, and I'd just seen Tubby a few days ago, because he was at our, you know, was at our house and stuff, too, with his girlfriend, but um, long story short, Tubby goes, I don't know, I need to get a truck, and I said, and I said, Tubby, $8,000 down, I said, doesn't matter if you have credit, I said, you know, you got five, you got almost $5,000 a month income, um, yeah, within a matter of an hour, I got him approved, um, you know, on a truck that he really needed at a, at a rate less than 5%. Um, and, you know, and the boom, it just stopped at me. I said, God, it's God, it like, this is, the, and then I saw the vision again today. This is the one that came through. But I know there's a lot, a lot more on the other side that, hey, I'm going to be helping. That God's doing it in his own time. That that fence Amen. is going to come down and you're going to get more than we can even handle that, that God's going to be blessing our home and family with. So, and I keep on telling Lisa, I said, Lisa, I don't know why that soaks peace. I said, I said, I said, you're the one that's ordering, you're the one that's carrying out the vision. I mean, all the burdens, but I, but I have been at peace for these last six months and I shouldn't be. But, <laughs> but again, it's because God has uh, something greater for us in store for us. Uh, we got a wedding going on in less than two months, and it's like, oh my gosh! And even trying to, you know, come up with everything we need for it, it's you know, it's going to happen, and God's going to bless our home and family. I know He is, yes, he is. by you know, what He's promised yes. to us. Praise Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just Jesus. know that there's going to be people pressing in to get in the kingdom of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Hallelujah. I'm gonna, I, I'll take it as a sign that. Rick and Steve didn't bring my notes back to me. <laughs> so I'm not going to preach for my notes. If you turn your Bibles, turn them after or Luke chapter 7. Verse 36. I don't have a lot of time. I don't want to keep you too off long. Matthew, or Luke chapter 7. Verse 36. It says, Now one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. Now, you know that when one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to his house, it's interesting that Jesus went. Because probably... This person didn't invite Jesus to his house because he was a follower or a disciple. This Pharisee probably invited Jesus into his house because Jesus was uh, kind of a hot commodity at the time. Because people were following him and flocking to him. Also, he probably invited him, him into his house so that he would have him in a place where he could manipulate him and try to prove that he was wrong. And try to prove that he was not the Messiah. So the, the, uh, the situation that Jesus is in here is not a situation where, uh, you know, probably if he were not the Son of God and not the Messiah, he might have been uncomfortable. And because he was a man, he probably was uncomfortable. Um, and so, just with that in mind, I want you to, we're going to enter into this passage of scripture because something miraculous happens in this person's, in this Pharisee's house. Probably also there are many other Pharisees, many other scribes and people of the, uh, of the Sanhedrin that were there that were um, there just to hear Jesus and to see what they could prove against him. But while they're there, and Jesus is reclined at, the, at the, the dinner table, verse 37 says, When a woman who had lived a sinful life in the town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, 
She brought an alabaster jar of perfume. And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured perfume on them. And so in this situation where there are probably a lot of, of, of people there who are self-righteous, People who are who think that they're somebody, maybe even people who are clients of this woman, who was uh, a prostitute. Obviously, it was known that this woman was a prostitute. She was a woman who lived a sinful life. She was a woman who had. Uh, probably a lot of things to be ashamed of. And probably a woman who would never, ever, 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 ever be welcomed into this Pharisee's house. Under no circumstances would she ever be invited into this guy's house. She found out that Jesus was there, and she went into that house. That's pretty bold. She went into that house, and the Bible says that she went and she stood behind behind Jesus. And you know, in, in the the Jewish custom, I, I don't know. Maybe it would be better if we ate this way. Maybe my knees wouldn't be so stiff. But. They're loosening up and Jesus said, I'm dancing today. That's good. Or start to do it anyway. A little bit. But the, he would have been sitting with his feet behind him, uh, reclined at the table, probably leaning on the table the way that was their custom. And this woman comes and she stands behind him. Now, can you imagine how hard she was crying that as she stood behind Jesus, the tears, it says she's standing. The tears were coming out of her eyes and down on Jesus' feet to the point that his feet began to be wet. And all these people, all these people, or a lot, most of them, looking at her saying, she's a sinful woman. What's she doing in here? Why is she here? The, the passage goes on and says, And as she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And then she, she got down on her knees, and it says that she began to wipe his feet with her hair. And she kissed them, and she poured perfume on them. Can you imagine the range of thoughts that were going through all the, the audience of this? <clears throat> Who, a lot of people there probably thought it was just a, a horrible and a shameless display of carnal affection. But what it was, was true and unadulterated worship of Almighty God. That this woman who was a sinner, this woman who was, who had many things to be shamed, ashamed of, boldly walked into the Pharisee's house. She didn't stand in the corner. She didn't hide from the people that were there. She didn't care about the people that were there. The only one that she cared about was that Jesus was there. And she went in and she began to worship God. She began to, she began to repent. Those tears that came out of her eyes were not, they were real tears of repentance. 
they were, were real tears of, of probably sadness mixed with joy. Sadness that she had lived a life of sin, but joy that she knew her Redeemer lived. And that her Redeemer was standing or sitting and sitting right in, in front of her. And as her tears wet his feet, she began to she began to get down and wipe, I mean, can you imagine, began to wipe his feet with her hair and then began to kiss his feet. The, 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 the act of foot washing in the Jewish home was the lowest. The, if you were the servant who washed the feet of the people who came in to the house, that was the worst job in that. And this woman, this woman began to pour her heart and to pour her, her life onto the feet of Jesus. And then after she had done that, she had brought a very expensive jar of perfume and poured it on his feet and anointed his feet. And, you know... Don't know how long um, she had to work to be able to afford that. Maybe it was maybe it was perfume. Maybe it was part of her. Maybe it was part of her business. Maybe it was a, a repentance and and giving up of of the life that she led before and poured it out on Jesus' feet. But as that song said, that woman came in. And poured the oil on her, on, on her Lord. And she left her sins there at his feet. Well, and, and probably all, the, all of the, the Pharisees, or, or most of the Pharisees, maybe even the disciples who, who were probably with Jesus, were taken aback by this act. But the only thing that matters was the, re, was the reaction or the interaction between Jesus and this woman. The only, thing, the only thing that was real was this woman pouring out her love and her, her um, repentance upon the feet of her Lord. Let's read on. It says, <clears throat> When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, if this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Rather than seeing the restoration of a broken, sinful woman's life coming to the Lord and being, and being forgiven and being made new and, and having a new life, uh, given to her, this man sees, oh, well this guy, he can't be the Messiah. If he, was, if he were the Messiah, he'd know that this woman who's touching him is a nasty sinner. That's the judgment of the Pharisee. And he didn't say it out loud, he said it to himself. And Jesus' response is, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two men owed money to a certain money lender, and one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he canceled the debts of both. Now, which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt canceled. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. And then he turned toward the woman and said to her, and said to Simon. So Jesus is facing... Jesus is facing Simon, <clears throat> or he's facing the woman, but he's speaking to Simon. He says, do you see this woman? I came into your house and you did not give me any water for my feet. Which would have, which, <clears throat> yes, just. This man who was supposed to be part of the, this man who was supposed to be a righteous man did not even afford to Jesus the common courtesy of welcoming him into his house. 
the 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 it was it was common hospitality. It, it would be like refusing to say, you know, if somebody comes to you, knock on your door today, you know, you open the door and, and you say, hey, come on in. This man didn't, didn't even offer to Jesus common courtesy. He says, do you see this woman? I came into your house and you did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and she wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time... I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, for she loved much. But he who has, begin, who has been forgiven little, loves little. And then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this? Who even forgives sins. And Jesus said to the woman. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. You know one of the. One of the things. One of the things that I take from this story, and one of the things that I that I think applies to us as the church of Jesus Christ, is our failure to recognize how much God has done for us. Our failure to recognize and our failure to be our failure to be thankful for the blessings that God has given us. Too often we take for granted where we were and where God has has brought us from. It's true. Some of us have been some of us have been raised in church. Some of us some of us may have not some of us may have been really good or some of you anyway may have been really good kids and really good adults and you may not may not have had a whole lot of things or sins that you needed to ask forgiveness for. And some of us may even think that, or may even feel like, you know, we, we've lived pretty good lives for Christ. But the truth of the matter is, all of us have fallen short. Amen. The, the, the sins of the Pharisee and the sins of that woman caught in adultery were enough to send them to hell. They were enough to separate each of them from God. The only difference was the woman had enough sense to know that her sins were separating her from God. And the Pharisee did not. The, the woman knew how much she needed Christ. She knew how much she needed Jesus. She knew so much that she didn't care who was watching. She didn't care who was, who was talking. She didn't care who was murmuring. Chances are pretty good she knew a lot of those people in the room. And she walked boldly in front of them because she saw Jesus. And, and like Alan was saying talking about there's one there's one gap in the fence that you can get through and his name is Jesus there's one place that you can there's there was one way that she could get away from the sins and, and she didn't really I don't think she really knew what was going to happen when she went before Christ she didn't know what was going to happen when she walked into that house she probably you know odds were probably really good that she was going to get thrown out on her ear Odds were really good that somebody was going to look at her and say, you're a sinful woman. You don't have any right to be here. Get out of this house. And that happens in a lot of churches all over America. That we look at people who don't look like us or smell like us or act like us and we tell them to get away because we don't want anything to do with them. 
And I'm telling you today, church, we need to be more like that woman. We need to be more like that, that lady who came in and, and she, didn't, she didn't worship God with half her heart. She didn't worship God with coming in and she didn't come into his presence and just kind of give him half a wave and say, oh, well, thanks for being here. But she came in and she recognized the distance between her and Almighty God. She recognized the distance between who she was and who a holy and a righteous God is. And she began to pour out her heart. And she began to pour out her repentance through her tears. And she got down and she wiped his feet with her hair. And she began to kiss his feet and, and, and just pour out her love upon him because she knew who he was. Too many of us who claim to know who he is don't bother to give him the time of day every morning. Don't bother to get up and say thank you. Put food in our mouth without recognizing that God is great and without him we don't have anything. Get in our cars and get in our and put on our nice clothes and, and don't recognize the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And there was a man who invited Jesus right into his very house and had no clue who he was. No clue. We need to know who he is. Amen. And when we know who he is, we'll act, when we really know who he is, we'll act a whole lot more like that lady than that Pharisee. Amen. We won't look at other there were people who there were people there who were looking at, at each other and there were people there who were looking at Jesus and saying who does this guy think he is? Or who does he think she is? You know, I'm more righteous than that guy over there. I'm thankful that I'm not like him. Man, that guy. They, that guy does this and that and the other. And I tell you what. When we do that, we come to church and we begin to judge ourselves against everybody else. That's a sin. Yeah. And that is not recognizing who Christ is. When we recognize who Christ is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who else is in, in, in church. It didn't, matter, it didn't matter that woman who was there. It didn't matter what they were going to say about her. It didn't matter. It didn't, the only thing that mattered was she recognized him as her redeemer. She recognized him as the one who was her deliverer. She knew that she had lived a sinful life. She knew that she would fallen short. And she knew that the only way that she was going to, that she was going to ever, ever, going to get close to God. It was going to be through her tears and through his mercy. And she recognized Christ and began to worship him. Amen. Jesus' response to Simon was simply this. You know what? If you've been, if you've been forgiven, who, if, a, if a man who's been forgiven a little bit and a man who's been forgiven a lot, who's going to love the most? Simon's answer is, I suppose, the man who has been forgiven the most. I suppose. Understand. Understand. If you've been going to church, like, like I have, you've been drunk in your, you know, your first, you were probably still in single digits and diapers that would have been changed on your high den when you went into your first church service. <laughs> that was me. Drug in and out of church every Sunday, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, every other time the door was open. And you know, sometimes we can get complacent and think, well, I've been here, I've done that. I know the drill. I can go through the motions. I can. It doesn't matter. It's not going through the motions. Every time we come to church, every time we open our Bible, every time we open our mouth, every time that we that we sing, we need to recognize that we were in the same spot as that woman. 
We need to recognize it doesn't matter if we send a lot or we send a little, we were separated from God. And 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 understand that, yeah, every one of us are the same. Amen. When it comes to that. None of us are better than the others. We all fall short. Exactly. Exactly. I want to be like this lady. I don't have much hair to wipe his feet with. <laughs> <laughs> I don't cry a lot. But I know I need Jesus. I know that I don't I know that I fall way short. And I don't ever want to come to church and go through the motions and and, and I don't wanna I don't wanna I don't want us to come to church and, and think about everybody else. I want us to come to church and look at Jesus and say, You're the one. Hallelujah. You're the answer. You're the hope. You are the joy. There's nothing without you. I, I had a sermon I was gonna to preach today about being double minded. And uh, this woman was anything but being double minded. You might hear it next week, it's a good chance. <laughs> but I don't want to be double minded. I don't want to be this this I want you know, this lady is the, the epitome of not being double minded. She could care less for the world. She had all the world that she could stand. And she was saying, give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. Amen. And that's where we need to be, church. Because the world needs Jesus. They don't know it. There's a bunch of people, just like the, that crowded house, who looked at him and saw him. And they saw the miracles that he did. They saw the things that the people that he had set free. And they still refused to believe. And they brought him into that house. And they began to judge him. And they judged others. And they had no idea of what they were missing. Had no clue. And you know, the most dangerous thing that we can be as a, as a, as a church is people who think that we're right when we're wrong. Of people who think that we know Jesus when we don't. That Pharisee had no clue who the Lord of glory was and he was sitting right in his own house. I don't ever want to be there. And I don't want you to be there. You know what? You know, when we recognize who, the, who our Savior is, it's easier to lift your, our hands. It's easier to fall on our knees. It's easier to pick up our Bible. It's easier to, to do all the things that we're supposed to do. Amen. But that, that, doing those things don't make you. Doing those things don't make you saved. Pouring, pouring your life out. That woman who just came unconditionally to God. She didn't say, God, I'll serve you if you do this. Or I'll give you this, uh, you know, I'll clean your feet. I know nobody cleaned your feet. But I'll clean your feet and I'll, I'll give you a little bit of offering every once in a while if you do this for me. No, she unconditionally surrendered to God in that place. You know what, we, when we think, we have a hard time sometimes coming in and, and worshiping God in a, in a nice place where the air conditioning is on and the music is good and, and uh, nobody else is around to speak badly of us. This woman came in, to, she came in to the halls of judgment and found Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, <clears throat> the last thing I want us to be as a church is the halls of judgment. Amen. The Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. Amen. But we need to always remember that I still need His mercy too. Amen. You still need, need His mercy too. Amen. He is worthy of your praise. 
He is worthy of your tears. He is worthy of your worship. He is worthy of you surrendering to Him every day. Amen. Stand your feet. Just want to. I want to. I want to pray. I want to pray over us as a church congregation. As a, but I just want to. If you're here today, and you've never surrendered, never given your life to Christ. Um, I want to give you opportunity to do that. You know, recognizing. No one ever. No one ever uh, gets saved or comes to Christ without recognizing that they're lost. The Pharisee had no idea that he was lost. And I want to tell you how, how you recognize that you're lost. Right now, as I'm speaking to you, the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. And he's tugging on your heart. And he's, and he's telling you that uh, this message is truth and you need it. Um, that you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And just like this woman who went into that place and she stood behind Jesus. Yeah, there was judgment there. There was probably hatred there. There was uh, condescension there. But none of it came from God. None of it came from Jesus. Actually, Jesus said, "It's for this reason that I came into the world. I didn't come. I didn't come to the world for health, healthy people. I came to seek and save the lost." And so, if the Holy Spirit's coming on your heart today, I just want to give you an opportunity to step out of your seat and come down and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Um, and and I say that, and I don't. But, you know, we say Lord and Savior a lot of times. And we, and we pass through some things. You know, we say it, it's almost a phrase. But Jesus doesn't come, he, didn't, he doesn't want to just be your Lord, and he doesn't want to just be your Savior. He wants to be your Lord and your Savior. That means that when you come to Christ, you surrender your life to him, he becomes, he becomes your first love. That you surrender the first love that you've had of yourself and you give yourself to Christ and he becomes your salvation and your joy and your peace. But he also becomes your savior. He's the one who, who delivers you. He's the one who sets you free. He's the one who in the midst of everybody else who might be judging you, welcomes you into the family. And not only is he the one who does that, he's the one who will stand, or who, will, who is seated by, the, by our Heavenly Father, and will intercede for you, and will mediate for you all the days of your life, until we meet him face to face. That's how good he is. Hallelujah. Is there anybody like that today? Father, in the name of Jesus, as we stand before you today, Lord, the fear that grips my heart when I think that we might be like that Pharisee is disturbing. Father, I never want to be in a place, I never want my brothers and sisters to be in a place where we are like that Pharisee that we don't recognize Almighty God when He's in our midst. That we don't recognize the fact that we fall so short without You. That we can get caught up in, in our own self-righteousness and think that, that we're okay without You. Lord, that, that just scares me. <clears throat> Father, I, 
give us the heart of that woman. Who it didn't matter who it didn't matter who was around or who what was going to be said, that we worship you. That we our hearts are tender towards you, Lord, that we that we know that you are real and that you are everything. That this life we live on the earth is a vapor that will pass away like the grass of the field. But Lord, your word and your spirit live on forever. But Lord, the, the, the peace that comes from knowing that when we draw our last breath on this earth, that we just continue to breathe in your life and your breath and we'll be where you are, is a peace, Father, that that we all need to have, and we need to say thank you for it every day. We need to recognize that except for you, we would be lost as well. Father, I just pray against any, any sense of judgment that we might have towards one another, that we would have towards new people who come in here. Father, I pray that, that we would all recognize your love and your mercy and your tenderness and, and recognize that every person out there, it doesn't matter how, where they've come, where they've been, what they've done, Lord Jesus died for them too. And that if our lives, if we have, if we have died to ourselves and live for you, then our purpose is to show them and to be your hands and feet and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. Father, I pray that you, you would just uh, begin to break up any places in our hearts where our hearts might have been, might be crusty, where we've gotten hard, where we've gotten complacent, where we don't recognize you, or that we've become, the, we've, we've started to become self-sufficient and self-righteous. Father, break that out of our life. Father, remove that from us. Your word tells us that you'll take out a heart of, our heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh that we might feel again. And so, Father, I pray that over us as a congregation. And Father, I just pray that when we come in and when we're together and we worship you, that we never go through the motions, that we never just do the drill, that we never just uh, think this is what we're supposed to do. But it always be an act of worship. It will always be an act of thanksgiving. Because we know what we've been set free from. And we know who we belong to. And so Father, I pray that over our congregation today. Father, I bless our, our folks today. I pray, Lord, that uh, as we go, continue through this weekend, uh, that we always remember you. That we always are thankful. That we always appreciate the life and love that we have in you. Bless our homes and bless our marriages. Bless our children. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Well, I pray that you have a great holiday weekend. That you are blessed. I know you're blessed. And that some, along, the, along the way this weekend, you get the opportunity to tell somebody how much you appreciate what the Lord has done for you. Amen. Amen. You are a smith. Give somebody a hug, tell them you love them.